Welcome in everyone to the Challenge After Show tonight, right here on the YouTube. Jenna, Pamela, and I are talking a brand new season of the Challenge, Ride or Dies, and the episode was called Don't Die for Me, Argentina. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Should I get that? Don't, don't cry for me, Argentina. They never go. heard of that. It's a, it's a uh, song. Yeah. They never heard of that one. Who sings it? Well, it's Madonna playing the You Take It Dan. It's it okay. uh, there's a Madonna version, but what's the Yeah, what's no, the... but she's it's a real Argentinian, like the woman who ruled Argentina, who was the first, her name's Ava Peru. You, know? you know more than me, yeah. Pamela. Well, what yeah, are you it's a about? famous the song is by Madonna, but it's from a biopic that Madonna was like, I must make this. Like mm. she came to Argentina, so she wanted to play Ava so let, so when when the yeah. when I looked at the episode title before this show started, I said, okay, there's gonna be a someone from Argentina and they're gonna go home and they're gonna give everything away and I'm gonna be so upset. It was nothing like that. So I was oh, very no, happy. It's don't die for me, Argentina. The truth is I never left you all through my wild days, my mad existence. You broke your promise. If this song doesn't get us more views, I don't know what will. Well, I feel uh, so. I by the way, watch. if you're interested in Bachelor in Paradise, we're covering that over on our Patreon. Jenna's not interested, but <laughs> uh, but uh, Pamela and I called it the real world on crack. So uh, we were watching that. And if you want to check it out on our Patreon, you can just click the link in our description below. There you go. As you can see, we're all dolled up for the opening night, the premiere night of the challenge ride or dies and we're about to break it down for you right now we're super excited tell us in the comments section who looks the fanciest right now <laughs> any I'll thoughts tell on you that my thoughts pam is giving date night pam she's giving oh i'm going out with my husband after this and yep. we just want to make things a little bit sultry and yeah. interesting and Dan is giving me your favorite fun teacher in high school. Like, oh, Mr. Lingren, he's the music teacher. He's awesome. He wears graphic tees with his sports blazers over his shirts. Yep. He's super cool. Okay, so. guys, because I was feeling wicked dumb, at least I was, it's Ava okay. Perone. So Don't Cry For Me, Argentina is a song recorded by something in 1976, Evita. That's what I was, I was like, why I can't, oh. he played Evita, Madonna in Evita. The so only Evita I know is from Rent. That, uh, oh no, Akita. Evita. No. Well, shut up. Ava okay. Perone's her real name to her, where they were reaching the life of Argentinian leader Ava Perone. It appears as the opening of the first or the second acts. Okay, we don't need all that, but it's called Evita. I was like, something I'm missing, like Ava Perone, great, but Evita. So Madonna made Evita. I guess it was a remake of a 1976 thing, The Rule of Argentina, and the big song from that was Don't Cry For Me, Argentina. Pam, you have an wow. excellent memory, and I feel like you've read every single page on Wikipedia because you always just pull these things out and you know a lot of stuff. I have a very interesting, weird, like a steel trap memory full of like random things from my short term memory is bad. And like, oh, I'm not a, like, I have like, I don't remember. I'm like, what'd we do, Luke? Like, yesterday, that movie with the guy and the dog. I think there's just because there's so much now. Like, I can watch 27 series. In like a month, and you I'm can like, mix things up for sure. Yes, Whereas so that makes sense be. because I'll say what our commenters are going to say is that you can't remember half the stuff that happens on the show that you just watched yeah. an hour before we do this, but you can remember Madonna needed to cover a song for the biopic from the set. 19th Absolutely, <laughs> because when something like moved you, then there was only like two movies you saw like in that six month, mm. and you were like, "Wow, that was cool!" and like it was a big deal when someone did something. Yeah. Well, one thing that we can all remember is that these MFers came in on a MF in yacht tonight to start off this episode. Oh my goodness, it gets more and more bougie every season. Uh, ladies, should we just start breaking down all these ride or dies and which ones are really ride or dies? Because I'm yes. a little unclear about some of these. But like, before we do, I just want to say one thing of the overall thoughts because you brought up the yacht. I love this episode. I thought it was fun, exciting, great twists. Um, I'm really, you know, I, I enjoyed the episode, but the beginning really overdid it for me. I mean, Dan, on our show a few weeks ago, you said, you know how it's going to open. They're going to open with the slow walk montage yeah. and we're going to get a whole video of everybody walking in, like talking over their voiceovers. And the whole yacht thing was really just like so dramatized for me. And it just felt so over the top. The, th the fact that they're on a boat is fun, but it was like the 
slow mo head yeah. tilting back. Well, how about the fact that they're only sitting with their ride or dies, like on the yacht, like they don't talk to anybody else, they're just chilling with their ride or dies, like. That's just not like everyone would just be mingling and and whatnot, but no, they're just chilling with their one and only. And I was oh. like, God, this is cheese ball. Yeah. And but you're right, Jenna. This episode was a great start to the season. Awesome twist so far. And let's be real, we know damn well that Anissa, Jordan, Darrell, and Veronica are joining this cast at some point, but we don't know when. And that's what's so fun about this season so far is all these twists and turns. I like that they sprinkled in Bananas and Nani at the end because uh -huh. there was already twists about the power team and what kind of leverage they'll have over the game. And then not only that, obviously what happens in elimination and then what another team has to do in elimination. And then they bring in Bananas and Nani. And I think that the cast is likely expecting, okay, this is where they draw the line. Like now they brought in Bananas. Right. What else can go on from here? But the fact that they have more to bring in is going to be excellent. And is I wonder if we talked about Jordan and Tori a lot, but I wonder if they had any sense that Jordan was going to enter the game at some point. Because you know that casts get leaked a little bit. If you watch the preview and you see Tori's face when they show Jordan walk in, if, if that is the real cut that they, or they just edited that together, she looks shocked as hell. And it looks fantastic from the preview. The Tori's always good for a surprise face. I mean, they, you can she tell sure Tori is. that she's doing something blindfolded and she's going to be like, this is the biggest twist ever. <laughs> Let me ask you this though, ladies, is this fair that all of these vets are coming in later in the game? Like, like they're not there from the beginning. They don't have the same challenges. They're obviously getting a shortcut to the final, especially Jordan and, the next two groups that come in. Maybe they're not. I don't know. But the thing that I couldn't watch, and I can't, I'm not going to spoil it because I couldn't watch it the last night, episode zero, was just those three couples going, these kids have no idea what's coming. Let's talk about, like, it was, again, a weird flash. Yeah, so, uh, so who was the three so, couples? You're saying Darrell was, was there? Darrell and Veronica, Jordan and Anissa, and okay. Bananas and Nani were, like, at a table so and that's a like, huge, so everyone, no matter who, I mean, I guess we all kind of knew who was coming on this season, but for someone that really does not deal with social media and stuff, if they watch episode zero, they already know all these that twists. That they're coming in, or yeah. maybe they didn't, like, again, I didn't watch long enough. A true know. fan watches episode zero. Apparently we're not true fans, because <laughs> all it of us skipped really episode weird. zero. Like, it was them doing, gonna do, like, a almost like a retrospective. It was set up so weird that I was like, I'm just gonna watch I it. will get to it eventually, but when you told me that it wasn't, like, a cast preview as much as something else, I was like, ah, I'll just wait. Again, Listen. maybe they get into it, like... I have to admit, I gave it five minutes and I was like, this is so weird. Am I weird? Like everything lately to me feels so weird. And I was like, I don't know if this is, maybe I need to look within the calls coming. And honestly, like we like, already knew like the so entire weird. cast coming into it. We did a Patreon. On the, we already knew the entire cast. So them introducing us to people, the only one I don't know about is those two people that came in once Casey and her bro bro, which is another reason why this episode rocks, had to go home. <laughs> I feel bad. Probably one of them got COVID. No, no, no. I'm not saying it like that, but I don't want to watch Casey and her brother all season. No, thanks. Thank they you. Yeah. Thanks, Pam. Thank you. Oh, you both froze on me. It was yeah. because I talked. There are two seconds of air. Time. I, was like, I think literally they got what? Oh, no. Look, I can still hear you. Yeah, you're you. good. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. You froze okay. for a second. Go ahead. Oh, well, I... That I, I legit feel like they were like, this isn't going to work with Casey and her brother. And I'm not kidding. No, uh, I watched Nelly's live and they said that oh. Nelly said in his live, I was watching during the show, how weird am I? I was like, in between commercials. I'd go to him because he'd go to his live and start answering questions. And okay. one of the questions he answered was that medical. She went home for a medical okay. thing. So I assumed it was COVID. I legit well, felt like they were too boring to be on the I show. I guess, say it again. I legit felt like they were too boring to be on the show. Well, hey, that's really the reason I wish that they put him home. But no, I think it was medical because that's what Nelly said. So, Which doesn't mean not everybody needs to be a reality. Her brother. Well, why would they bring them in for one day and be like, oh, you're too boring? Like, come on. No, uh, yeah, Pam, I think that that's wishful thinking and maybe yeah. like a tunnel vision thought because they would never cast somebody who won the previous season. Correct. Bring on their brother and then cut the ties because they're boring. If they they would have cut a lot of ties way before that if, if they felt that way. Maybe they didn't know how boring. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so so I'm, kind of or, I'm sorry, wait, did they, they didn't even compete in the first daily challenge. There's no way they would have done that. But um, I guess I'm at least glad that Nelson went on his Instagram and talked about it because it was so jarring. 
how they told us. There was zero explanation, at least in the past, even if the team is exited by the time they reveal it on camera, there's a reason why somebody had a family hey. emergency, somebody broke an ankle, somebody's sick. Don't just say, okay, they left the game. I was like, what the hell? They it was didn't want. Weird. They don't want to talk about COVID. They want to believe that COVID doesn't exist and that they run a COVID-free show when that's just an impossibility. It's going to happen. And just we say we, medical reason. Put, uh, say it. Right. Hey, do, hey. do they really think that the viewers aren't all going to be going on social media, asking questions? Everyone's going to figure it out eventually. Everyone's going to ask. Just say it on the show. Also, don't we know. don't know Kenny. So hearing like, I was so, I was like, wait, did he just say, like, it was all so quick. It wasn't like, this is a bummer, guys. I hate to break it to you. There was no TJ like right. announcement, like due to medical reasons. It was just like, okay, guys, we're starting the games. It's Casey and Kenny had to leave. We're bringing in. I was like, wait, what? Yes, exactly. It felt like on? when we did our parody video, if anybody remembers from our After Buzz days, when we put we did our janky final at the La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles, hey. it felt like. It felt like TJ was being CJ, enter Pam's husband, and was just like, okay, here we are. We're going to get ready. <laughs> You're like, final. Casey's here. Like, that was David Punkar. Christopher couldn't make it. That was like, <laughs> Casey, and they're gone. Like, oh, okay. I guess they came all the way to Argentina. Yeah, and it was really abruptly handled. Anyway, I guess. So, anyways, the only other team that, like, we'll talk about all the teams, but the only team I didn't have any, like, when they came in for Casey and uh, uh, brother, Kenny? Is it Kenny? Kenny. That's we'll what never I was like, know. We'll, yeah, we'll yeah, never yeah. need to know the answer again to that. Um, was the um, Olivia and Horatio. So I just looked up. Did you know who the heck they are? I didn't know. I, they no didn't, idea. They didn't even like, tell I us who they were, which is who weird. They are. Horatio is a soccer superstar. Cool. And Olivia was on Love Island 3. I just looked it up. All right. Great. There's a few that I was like, who the hell are any of these? So. Well, the other ones were able to explain it. Like Fessy was like, this is my friend. And like, you know. By the way, they're not writing Fessy in his name. They're writing his. He wants to be known as Faisal. But Faisal. His full name. But why, and but, he's yeah, proud right. of it. Okay. No, and that's fine that he is. But it's interesting that everyone's still calling him like, yeah, whatever. Okay. Um, let's hey, go Dan. over the hey, cast Dan. members. Yeah. Hey Dan. Hey. Hey. Hey Dan. Hey Pam. Pamela. Sorry, Pamela. Pamela. <laughs> uh, Jenna, what would you like to be called this season? <laughs> I'm just good. Yeah, that's good. I, was, I was waiting to get you to say Pam. I'm unoriginal. Yeah, no, Pam works for me too. I'm all not right, great. Like this season. Uh, so should we break down all these characters that are introduced in order? Sure. Uh, the, the first one is Laurel and Jack. Jack spelled with two Ks. He's got a head tattoo and hopefully the words on his head tattoo are spelled correctly, unlike his name. So there you <laughs> go. We start with them. Any thoughts on Laurel and Jack? Like them. I, I I liked Laurel so far. I just watched a season, the season where her and Car Maria become friends a couple of weeks ago, and she's her defender. And I have a nice place in my heart for Laurel right now. Is my <laughs> bias? And I thought Jack was clever using the information that he had, and I like that they explained how they met because I was like, is he that guy from the Peak thing? And mm -hmm. I like, gotta say, I liked it. Laurel wasn't a like aggressive and when turbo freaked out which we'll get to she was like you know i could see laurel being like fuck you like throwing some turbo at turbo and she was like i right, buddy like i'll pour it I out mean, it's sorry. real early i mean we're not even at the show yet they're just on a boat ride at this point and and turbo's freaking That's out we'll get into that in a little bit though for sure yeah, yeah i think more, it's sure. hard to argue back against a turbo because you know what you're gonna get he'll never find the humor in it I don't, I, I have to believe that some of it is a cultural barrier um, and also a mix of his personality. So I think they all know, okay, once you cross turbo, he's never going to let it go. So he's the person that you can't even really argue back with. Uh, uh, Laurel's a classic. So it's fun to have her back because she, she like uh, ebbs and flows. And when she arrives, you know, she's not somebody that enters a full retirement, but if she's not on multiple seasons in a row, you think that you're never going to see her again Absolutely. because she's probably busy with other things in life. So it's fun to have her back, uh, especially because we need some strong female competitors. And so far, I like her partner too. He's funny to me because he outed Colleen as soon as he could about being the mole, which I don't fault him for. But then it was funny because later on in the show, Colleen 
saves him. And he says, well, she showed to me her true colors. <laughs> and I, I understand what he's saying that, you know, she was the mole on a different show, but also the premise of that show was to be the mole. Right. So I felt like he was kind of giving her too much of a hard time and acting a little bit high and mighty about it. Like, oh, she proved to me she's worthy. And it's like, okay, but you didn't even like give her a she shot. Was, she, well, she was on a reality show. That's like saying that, oh, everyone on Love Island, all they do is kiss and make out yes, all day. Right. I like, mean, look, we know they can do other things. Yeah. It's just silly sometimes with that stuff, but yeah. Well, that yeah. I also feel like dumb on her before all that happened. I'm like, you can't lie about something that's public record. As Jack said, it's like, yeah. you're not being super slick. Anyone who knows your name can like look you up. I like, guess, but when are like their phones taken away? When do they find out who they're going against? Like that part of stuff I don't really know and I want I know they all meet at the airport supposedly that's what they say is that's when all the the talking starts but I mean they know ahead of time because we've seen West for multiple seasons contact everybody that's going to be on the show and try to make partnerships I feel like the producers want that they want them to have some type of history before going in so they're not all scrambling for stuff when they get there they want them to be well prepared and better put on a better show because we know bananas in West that year they, they joined teams they yes, didn't just meet at the airport and say let's do that so it would, he looked up everyone who was cat. Like he, he but didn't that's my point. So why right? would this girl think she can get away with being and the mole or being on out. a show with the mole? It's so stupid of her. People yeah. then again, underestimate her. people. People yeah. underestimate people, one. And then people are dumb is another thing. They don't take the time. They think, whatever, who cares? I don't but care. She's also, she's, on, on she's not from the States. Yeah. And maybe she doesn't know how like seriously people take this show or how much they prepare. I don't know. Because you've seen some people that come in from other shows that have no idea what the challenge is. And like yeah. they don't know how to swim or they don't know how to do things. It's like, guys prep yourself they don't do puzzles at all it's like guys this is what the challenge is do some research before so maybe she didn't do research but we have no idea she How probably many? didn't but doesn't mean other people won't so again fessy clearly didn't he's like oh yeah how was that <laughs> you know I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 how many cast members are on this season well so here's the thing and this is why i'm confused why these rookies didn't think about this when they're all making these alliances during this episode there's 26 cast members, which is a super odd ass number. And you have to think if you're on the cast, you know, every season it's what, is it 30 or 32 people that come on the show? I thought I it varied. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. It used to be 24 back in the day, which I liked more. I believe now it's always 32. So my point is they know there's six more people in theory that are supposed to come. And that would work with our math, Bananas team, Darrell's team, and, um, Jordan's team that's six more people to get to 32 so when they're when these rookies are making that alliance I was thinking guys don't you realize there's only 26 of you right now that this is going to change but maybe I it's just me being I, yeah I'm, I don't yeah, even that's understand like really analytical <laughs> um, but my point was she's gotta know she's taking a huge risk by just the, the amount of people that are there by saying she was on a different show than what she was on because just like Jack's oh. point I find it hard to believe that Jack is the only person that would know any better. And as rookies, it's, we know any target from my girl, Michaela, saying like, oh, like they're saying she had a list. It's like, you're a rookie, rookie team. You're lying off the bat. Whether it's a serious lie or not, target, target, target. So I just wrote out my note was like, that's pretty dumb of her because especially since it's not a secret. But when all. these producers send out the list of people to the different cast members, you don't think that they write down uh, Jack and then they write down what he is. Like uh, he's Laurel's friend, uh, X on the peak. Like, don't, don't you think they write a little description about each one? And wouldn't they write that she's on the mole? And then obviously, so what, Fessy didn't read the thing then? Like, I just feel like they put a little description of each player right. so you kind of get a better understanding of them and use it in the game again they want them to be well prepared so again i'm not sure i even believe this bs about I jack being you know what? Little... Interesting, actually because i do wonder if to the cast members the information is supposed to be concealed you know because by the time we figure out who's on the cast do they really know how why would they know that these two people from germany that have never been in the challenge world, why would they think that they'd be on it? You know, so I actually can maybe see what she was trying to do. Maybe she just assumed that nobody knew who she was because she was from a different country. Unless I, she received that same sheet that had everyone's names and what they've been what on they before, then I'm really confused. Sheet. I don't believe that they don't know who each other are, but not like Dan, they're not sending it to press contacts because they want them to do this. They might find out or know who they are, but I think you do have to take the extra step. So two German people or Colleen and Kim, who we've never seen, never heard of, even if I read she was on the mole, Germany, 
that wouldn't click for me as anything if I read it a month ago, because it doesn't mean anything to me. I don't, I'm not familiar with the mole Germany. I don't know who she is. Like it would, I could see it even if they had the information, unless you're actually learning what mm. is that? What does that mean? Did she win? Who is she? How'd she do that going in and out of your head? Because it's like, you know, again, when it's a show that's not in the United States, you don't know them, you don't know of them, you don't know anyone who knows them. You have to put in a little legwork to, to figure out things. All right, next up is Tamara and Turbo. Uh, is that just his friend? Or are they dating? Or girlfriend, boyfriend? Or what are they? No, they didn't clarify. But didn't clarify? I, thought, I thought, we all thought that that was his girlfriend. I thought so too. not clarify, so. Ooh, no clarification. Yeah. Okay. my Tamara. My Tamara, ooh. Well, look, I don't know. I don't know if you girls are feeling, feeling Turbo, but I'm feeling the drama that he's bringing. I don't care if it's like misdirected and ridiculous. I just want to see him destroy people in this game. I well, really I do. I want say. him to put his money where his mouth is. I mean, the only people that I really want to win over him are like a Jordan and, yeah. and a Jarrell, I guess, too. But like, other than that, like, go Turbo. Go for it, buddy. I don't yeah, care. Why don't you tell everyone what we're covering on our Patreon? Because I, I already did. Oh, you did? Sorry. I see, did a big tonight. thing about it, Pamela. Yeah. Where? Really? Okay. Right anyway. Tonight, yeah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as we discussed a little while ago, uh, we were talking about for Bachelor in Paradise, some people are like actually cr like like concerned mental health crazy, not funny reality TV crazy. And some people like, I think Turbo is fully aware of his- I think he is too. I, I think, think he's playing like a game. super winking at the camera, like it's pussy chicken too now. I don't think but, he's as serious right. as Right, But the language gap does play a role in him getting a little too fired up over certain things, I think as well. But I also, I think if he thinks someone's being mean to him, he knows exactly what he's going to say back. And he's not doing it because he's crazy. He's doing it because he doesn't want anyone talking shit. So I like I, it. I agree. It's a combination. Of, I do think he doesn't get sarcasm. Like, yeah. I've been saying, oh, don't get any ideas, Turbo. Like, that's like a, it's not going to, the slang is lost on him. The joke is lost on him. So he just hears someone calling out his name. And he's like, what? What? But I can I think see him, you can't see him being a little offended by that. Like he thinks that what? He's just going to hurt people with a knife? Like what? I'm I'm this off the rails and I'm going to hurt people with a knife? Like don't talk about me like that, Devin. Maybe I don't want to hurt yeah, people with a knife. No, I'm agreeing with you. I'm and saying I think that I, but I, but I think that Devin used the, the martial arts thing as an excuse after he realized how pissed off Turbo. I think he was afraid at that moment. He said, oh, because you, you're good at martial arts. Is that really why you I said that? Or is it because you think that this guy's a freaking psychomaniac and you wanted to call him out for it? You thought you were being cute and funny, Devin, with your, all your right. jokes. Which, by the way, I like Devin and all, but those jokes, you know, you don't... Sometimes they can hurt people's feelings. I make a lot of jokes. I hurt people's feelings. I've learned from it. And I don't do it as much anymore. Uh, Devin, come on, man. You might hurt someone's feelings. Yeah, it's funny Not you say that, Dan. You know hurt that was someone. my immediate interpretation. I was like, oh, Devin is saying that because oh, Turbo yeah. is somebody who always wants to fight everyone and he's not afraid of being violent <laughs> and physical. So the martial arts thing, I was like, oh, is that what he meant? If not, no, nope, that's not what he meant. I don't think Devin, so. Good <laughs> thinking on your feet, Devin. Yeah, yeah. that's why Devin's that, that's where the wit comes in handy, not for the insults, but for the getting yeah. out of it. Yeah, the getting out of it. <laughs> on the topic of Turbo. All we really saw from him was the conversational drama. I wanted to see more of him in the Daily Challenge. There was a lot of people we didn't see, but there was not even like two camera shots of him doing anything in the Daily Challenge. And I was frustrated because he comes in big and bad and hot and we've seen him in finals. He is an crazy, amazing competitor. He's incredible, but we see him getting heated with Laurel and, but we don't see him perform. We don't well, see him Let's, let's be honest there. though. In everybody's defense, did we really see anybody doing like who got second? Who got third? Who got we don't even know who was close to beating Johnny oh, and do. his girl or whatever it is. Yeah, was. Like, I do know who got second and third. I, and, how yeah. do you know? Because I watched it and they show you. So I, oh I Jay and Michelle, so. Jay and Michelle are on Johnny and Raven's heels. They almost get it before them. Okay. And Nelson and Arise almost got first place but Nelson forgot his own age so oh, I remember well well hold, see I guess I'm confused but I remember him forgetting his own age but I didn't think it was that was what cost him like he was that close they actually I mean, announced they had and all third. Their, they, no no they didn't announce it but right. just kind of watching it Nelson and Narice actually got all of their numbers first but they were incorrect so had they been correct in their math they would have made it to the fi the finish line. I did see the two P. It was like, okay, so now I should remember Jane. Right. Yeah, I just, I, that was a cluster F of a first challenge. 
I mean, we can get into it in a little bit once we go through all these characters. But... No, you're right. That was my like biggest takeaway too, though, is we barely got to see anybody. And it's yeah. just kind of annoying because you start putting these little storylines in. Like if we see Turbo puff out his chest and act a certain way, then why can't we see any of what he did in the right. daily challenge? Absolutely. Yep. Um, well, uh, spoiler alert, Kayla and Sam are on this season. They're next on our list here. And uh, if you haven't watched the show yet, you better stop talking to us because uh, they go home tonight and they are next on our list. I, I knew Sam from what? What was he on? Excellent. Was he on X on the Beach? What no. was Sam on? I think Something... he was, I thought. No, nope. Oh, God. I don't oh, know. No. I don't think so, though. I think only European shows. Like he was on a Gordy Shore Love Beach in the UK. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's look it up. He was I, definitely. Oh, on look it up because I swear he was on an X on the Beach, but not with Kayla. And then he hopped into, well, she hopped into his DMs after she watched the damn thing. I don't know, but I have to say my biggest turnaround from start to finish of when we met each other from hating Kayla to quite enjoying her this time. Well, I mean, I'm glad. I hope you enjoyed her tonight. I did enjoy her tonight. I also don't care if she went. And Sam seems so funny. I was like, he seems No, adorable. I'm pretty sure Sam was on X on the Beach. All right. Well, Jenna. Or X on the Peak. Like one of the two. Well, I've never seen him before. Out. Love Island out. and X on the Beach. X on the Beach in the United States? UK. Yes. UK. <laughs> no, I, why did I watch it then? You didn't. All right. You didn't. Please tell us in the comments below if I'm going crazy. Because I guess I'm going crazy. You're going uh, crazy. Next up is Norris and Nelson. Norris I've known for a long time. Norris was not only on uh, Are You the One, but she also appeared on a season of X on the Beach. I recall or X on the Peak, one of the two, same thing. Stupid and X now, on the Peak only happened once. I know it only happened once, but it was still a season of it, and it was still technically the same show. They just changed the name because they were in cold weather. Um, and then uh, Nelly, who we obviously know from everything, because he's a friend of the show. Technically, yeah. he came on at After Buzz TV with us. Mm -hmm. uh, our picture of him, I believe, is our uh, our profile pic on YouTube. Us and Nelly hanging out at After Buzz TV. Mm. And I like this team a lot. I like uh, both of them. I don't know if I approve of Norris uh, hooking up with Johnny, who is my uh, my gym buddy. Him and uh, Johnny and I go to the same gym in L.A. So uh, not sure I like that, but we'll get into that in a little bit. What are, how, what are your feelings on uh, Norris and Nelson, ladies? I quite like that team. I'm into Me it. too. I like... I like Norris and I think Norris and Nelson, they're going to be very entertaining. Like they're always fun to watch. And we see Nelson, we'll, we'll talk about it, but you make the most Nelson move of all time. Um, as far as her hooking up with Johnny, it's crazy to me that they hook up on the plane. Yeah. Like they're 16 years old and they're going on like an unchaperoned trip without their parents or something. Like, I don't know. Hooking up on the plane just feels like Who's next to you? Is it oh. another challenge person? Is TJ sitting next to you? Is there a normal other patron of the plane sitting next to you? It just feels like y'all really could have wait. I don't know. It's silly to me that they're hooking up on the plane. A long plane ride though to Argentina and drinks involved. Like I'm like, it's like being on a bus. Think of all the bus hookups we've had. No, you're not in private, but after the club, after the club. Oh, good point. Yeah. You, yeah. They said you get the illusion of privacy and apparently they were just kissing. I mean, I don't want to say I get well, it. I, I would hope it was just kissing by the way. <laughs> Well, um, yeah. I mean, I mean, I guess it's I old and boring. Like, if I'm on the plane, and I'm watching TV or reading or napping. Like, <laughs> yeah, but you're also next to your husband, who you've been right. with and for going on, what like, six years or something. Husband. So it's it's yeah. they're like this is brand new. They're so excited to just have their lips touch. Um, mm, so right. ladies, so we're feeling each other. Okay, that if, makes you sense. Remember, yeah. if you remember, if you remember, Selly from the Challenge yes. USA, Johnny and her dated on Love Island, and they were like the oh. one of the it couples from that show. And then he got put into the other house and then kissed another girl. Then she forgave him when he came back to the oh, other rooftop. Sorry, Selly, who we love. I was thinking of another C name girl with the big hair. Forget it. Selly, we love, who was on Challenge USA. Okay, anyway. Yeah. So they yeah. were together on uh, the Love Island that took place on the Vegas rooftop. And I believe in their love. Like, I think I might be a sucker for Johnny. Like, I'm like, he really likes yeah, he just, he's like, just I like trying to buy he's, what he is selling. I believe he's got a sincerity about him, too. Where no, he's like, a, he seems like a cool dude, but I don't trust him with girls. He wants to oh, see, I thought him and Selly, it's, it is what it is. I felt, 
I felt bad for him. I was like, Sally, forgive him. He made a mistake. Yeah, right. I, See, he did it then. He'll do it now. It is what it is. He's young still. He's wow, not ready. He's got you, Pam. He's got you wrapped around his finger. I know. I think, I think he's athletic. They performed so well in the daily. And I'm happy for the moves that they made. They're playing smart. They're playing ambitious. They're not playing a fearful game. So I like this team a lot. I so, yeah, to be Johnny clear, you're and, talking about... Do we move to Johnny and Raven now? Well, that's what I'm saying. So you're you're referring to Johnny and Raven now, Jenna. Yes, sorry. You moved on. That's fine. And Raven. So Raven looks, she favors Jasmine from Big Brother. Does she not? Did you not look at her face and think, who does she look like? And then it came to you and it was Jasmine from Big Brother. So the first shot they show, Pamela, because you and I both saw that shot, they show a quick like flash of her and that's it. And I said, I said, that's not possible for Jasmine to be on this show. The filming wouldn't work. It wouldn't. And then I saw her again and I'm like, oh no, that girl's prettier than Jasmine. So yeah. That is what happened to me. I would never say she was prettier, but I did. You didn't think she, think she was better looking than Jasmine. I'm the only one that thought she was better looking than Jasmine. That's fine. Okay. Doesn't matter. We don't they look exactly the same to you. Okay. <laughs> I didn't, we're, we don't need to quantify their looks. Um, I like her though. She's got the, the two of them. I agree with Jenna. He, I thought would be, I have no idea who he is. I didn't even remember he was Sally's guy from that. I have no idea who she is, but I'm glad they won. And he applied some strategy. Again, a guy who did his homework. He's like, Tori and Devin are the king and the queen of this. You guys, they always put the workers to work together. And there's, there's more to this though, too. We feel, we feel for Raven because obviously she likes him more than he likes her. So you feel for Raven in that moment as well, which makes you want to root for her. And yeah, and they and they dominated today and they made some big moves. It was fantastic. But yeah. I have a question mark, question mark, Raven, which first, where is she from? But second, is she, was she defending him and being like, no, I, or was she just, was she saying, I in couldn't tell if Nelson was just with her and it's a cutaway. Nelson was talking to Raven about their partners hooking up. And I feel like, Raven was had Johnny's back and I was like huh. well she understands that they're not dating so that's why I do feel bad for her because she really shouldn't even look at this relationship as anything more than them just being friends but she does because I guess she really likes him and she's hoping that there's potential and I think you know what happened is I think she thought that there was potential going into this game and then Johnny immediately hooked up with Maurice. So now she's just kind of trying to like get over the fact that she doesn't have that possibility anymore. So you feel I, I do feel bad. For I did too. Right. But, but and- in terms of defending him, I think she's just real enough. And also, yeah. even though her feelings are hurt, probably like self-secure enough to just be like, all right, well. Obviously, this isn't going to work, but she's still in her feelings, but she's not like a 16-year-old girl who's going to freaking cry a a temper tantrum over it. You know, she's just like, this sucks. I'm hurt. But he didn't technically do anything wrong. He just doesn't like me. Right. No, I like I like this team. I like her. I think she's rational. I think she understands the situation she's in and she's doing the best to get through it. But I will say this. Are is this is one of my teams where I look at them like, are they really ride or dies? Didn't they just bump into each other on the Las Vegas strip? He tried to flirt with her. He got some probably. She got some. And they kind of just stayed in touch as casual hookups or something. Like, what is this friendship? <laughs> what are, what am I missing with this one? Like, I get it. Sam and Kayla, they're married. I get that's your ride or die. You're married to someone. We'll get into Amber B in a second. She's been dating this guy, Chauncey, for quite some time now. We saw them on Instagram years ago. So I get that. Those of them are ride or dies. But I this is one of those ones where I'm like, really? Are they really ride or dies? But whatever. Yeah, so, no, I agree. That kind of fell flat. I, I so it wasn't just me then that felt like I missed it. I was like, like they so bumped weird. into each other. Well, I think he's kidding. I think he's obviously alluding to the fact that they have like this flirty on and off. I don't know relationship or friendship, but it's really vague. So it kind of makes us just have our own interpretation. Like it's not very clear. Did you guys once date? Well, Are you best friends? Friend, like friends with benefits What's you know they should that's the show here? they should do the challenge friends or benefit friends with benefits and have them only be teams that are friends with benefits and see who cheats on each other that's a show is, is i'll watch Raven that now, is that it she's johnny's ride or die like do we know has she been on tv before or she just jenna's looking her up right now i know jenna's okay. looking her up right now i have a feeling so Am the I thing right? that i see that is funny is from vevmo so take that for what you will but i just see a comment that says their bond 
is being represented by the same agency question mark just when i think the show <laughs> can't get any more stupid yeah that's so stupid, if that's they're, oh. i don't know they're theorizing the fact that they are represented by the influencer like, agency, agency. He was like you two met before right you're ride or dies okay well, we had talked I mean, that's about just what Devmo is saying. I I can't. I don't know. I need like the MTV website. I mean, even their own explanation for their relationship was a hit on our. We've obviously been intimate before, but it, we're not a couple. So it's yeah. like so that I've got lots of those. Like, do we have? Does that mean like anyone you've ever hooked up with? Like, does that mean they're your ride or die? I don't know. Anyway, so she wasn't on other shows, but she's obviously, she's got an agent. No, she's, she's well, but no, hold on. She might, you don't just get an agent for never being on a show. She was obviously on something else, then got that agent. And that's who we have to find out what show. There's no way she was not on a show before. She might be like an, an influencer. They have like influencer agents now. Raven. All right. Here, here, Jenna, Jenna, I'll give you her last name. Rochelle, R O C H. Oh, okay. okay. But on MTV's website, all they have is a list of players. They don't even give them a description. It says, will these unbreakable bonds survive the cutthroat game? Yeah, so, and but Pamela, you might be right before. because it says here that Johnny got runner-up on Love Island and his relationship didn't work out. That's referring to Selly. However, he settled for something better, a friendship with Raven, who he invited to be his ride or die in the competition. That still doesn't mean she hasn't done something before, though. I don't understand. But Not so him inviting me. her, you know. It's BS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey, uh, Johnny yeah. Millbrooks, no one knows who you are. How about we give you all that responsibility of choosing the perfect person to be on a reality show with right. you? Uh, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure. No, that was influence. like a producer favor to their influencer agency to like have some girl from Zimbabwe being the like face of the next chat. I don't know. All Who right, knows? let's let's um, move on to uh these okay, big brother people. Well wait, yeah, is in... that? oh sorry, excuse my why are you saying the F bomb? The F bomb, because also now I'm looking at my notes. Who is Fessies and what is she doing? Like, who the hell we didn't? Well, we're not we there yet. Hold like, on, I'm almost I'm getting there. We did it already, there. though. We covered Fessy. All right, fine. Fessy and Mo Morea Moriah. Oh, we didn't cover them. We just talked about Fessy's name. Forget it. Yeah, M O R I A H. Right. I don't know who what she's from. I think Mariah. she's a, and she just she might just be a friend. I don't know why he would get to choose just a random friend, but yeah, okay. Same yeah, that's all we know. Um, <laughs> Annalise and Tommy. What's that? Can I tell you something? Yes. Yeah. I'm kind of happy that Fessy is back because okay. I love to hate him. So that's fun. You need someone that you love to hate. Like I was like, Ooh, kind of happy Fessy's back. And it's also kind of a familiar face in this pot of all these other people who we don't know. Mm -hmm. And we know that he is athletic. So I just am interested to see how he's going to do. I'd rather see uh, Fessy than Josh, so I'm okay with I, it. Right. I don't 100% disagree. And I think, ironically, in a funny way, he's like overly self aware. Like, I think he takes the criticism to heart and is now mm -hmm. on the show trying to address it, which is even almost weirder than just kind of being. So it's interesting to watch him sort of squirm. Like, he knows he's been cocky, but it's like not even cocky, just. He was very oh, quiet yeah. episode one. He no, we didn't really see much of him, just him in the hot tub being confused by the other girl. So right. we've, always, we've always felt this way about Fessy, though, that we've always felt that he's very aware of the fact that he's on a reality TV show and he's trying to navigate what his reality TV show persona right. is. So he kind of comes off as all of these half different versions of himself as he's like trying to just figure out how he should act so Absolutely. it's either like cocky but then you're squirmy and you don't like confrontation and you're awkward but also like you puff your chest in front of certain people and fight people for certain for stupid reasons so he's kind of like figuring out what his role is I 100% agree with you and again I watched his big brother season and he was a nice guy like, I think that was the most sincere he's ever been. That was his original thing. I don't think he was cultivating a reality TV persona as as carefully. He was genuinely nice. He was with, like, not the cool kids in the house. They weren't not cool, but, like, even his girlfriend, who's beautiful, you know, like, he had, like, they're, they're cool in their own right, but there was the sort of dominant, confident gang. 
Um, he was not a part of that. And he was great at games and humble and nice. And he didn't win because he wasn't a shithead. And I think that's where that spurned his challenge persona. But it's like, yeah, nobody likes that. And I think it's secretly, he is a nice person. Yeah. So I think he's trying to find a blend between those. But I do mm. it does feel awkward because it seems like he sort of lost his true self in the, the years that yeah by being on tv and again this is like the deep like you can't i don't know how anyone could possibly function you're either crazy or you pay no attention at all to like constant public criticism of yeah. who you are. and like, i definitely a- empathize with the situation because i imagine it would be really hard because i'm also curious of what it i don't know if he's old enough to have really launched a career before he went on the show so He's probably like, what do I do? You know? Right, but like, at the same time, he continuously gets asked to come back. So whatever he's doing is kind of working. And you know what? Maybe we'll give him another chance. Maybe some one of us, maybe he has a one in three chance of one of us liking him by the end of his uh, run on this season of Ride or Dies. Maybe. I mean, maybe. I doubt it, but we'll see. Well, speaking okay. of big brother people, we have Annalise and Tommy. Do you yes. ladies remember? I don't know them. I did. Years. I watched it and I love Tommy. Okay. Like, Tommy's the best and he's exactly, if you guys, I don't, Jenna, did you watch his season? No. Okay. He's like, what you see is what you get. He's just this ball of sincerity. He's nice. He's sweet. He's a Broadway dancer. So he's effusive. He's physical. Like he's good at doing things. He just is literally, he's never not like that. Like mad, happy, sad. He's always like, but this is what I want to do. You know, he's, he's real. He's never like had any sneaky weirdness even on big brother he was true to himself he was pretty honest he played the game though i think he was in final three he was somehow some really close yeah because he was good at things too like he's not dumb okay. he's pretty physically capable the girl unfortunately i don't remember very much um he had another friend on the show that wasn't her that he was like good friends with because he knew before he had come on and that was like his big secret but he's adorable I don't know how far he'll go and I don't know what her capabilities are but he's a really likable sort like that's no, he, he looks called. likable but he also looks oh. five foot nothing a hundred and nothing so that might come into play at some point in this season imagine him versus Fessy in a hall brawl dude kid do not participate in this game you are or going to get are there times severely when hurt tiny helps like are there times when being tiny could help yeah if he crawls yeah. on the ground and hopes fessy doesn't step on his back on the way mm-hmm. out my god and the final i have one more fessy thing to say it's funny because i i know fessy just wants to win he wants that out more than anything that's what he cried about in his last he's like even josh who obviously we know by default won. he's like you won something dude i've never won and it's just ironic because fessy fessy just seems like he was built in a lab to win these things and he just yeah. seems to make it happen so i kind of love it <laughs> so i'm happy to see him on it again too because i want to see him cry well does. sometimes having those obstacles makes you thrive better you know yeah uh for sure yeah. uh we got a big hitter here we have tori and Devin next on our list i'm super excited to see them together um, are they ride or dies? Yeah, I guess they, 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 they barely make the definition, but yes, they're ride or dies. I mean, they were so, they weren't friendly for a while. Like they, then they, they were fighting and then they became frenemies or whatever the hell they were at some point. So, but they're, I guess they're ride or dies now. It's a good, yes. it's a great team. Like it's a, I think it's a strong team. I think they balance each other out. Well, I think Devin can take over some puzzles where Tori can take over some more, uh, physical stuff, especially when she has to go up against the other girls one-on-one. He's the brawn uh, and he's the brains. I love it. He's (laughs) just so calm in situations. Like even during the challenge of the day today, he was like, no, let's just think about this. Let's, let's, let's reset. There's no reason because they're freaking out over there. Why don't we just reset for 10 seconds while they freak out for 10 seconds and figure this out. So I really like the way Devin plays the game for the most part. I mean, I think he occasionally needs to keep his mouth shut for certain things, but we'll see if that bites him in the ass. He's also now six and two in eliminations. That's pretty damn good. Good job, Devin. I like them together. I think that they're fun. And I think that their friendship is an example of they've just been in this together for so long. They've been in two seasons of Are You the One? Or maybe it was one season. And all of these years of being on the challenge that they have to form some sort of liking towards each other, almost like a Bananas and West situation. Like you can only be enemies for so long. And I think sometimes when you're 
enemies with someone, you've almost seen the worst of them. Therefore, maybe they become easier to love at the end of it. Like when you get to know them and understand them, like there's nothing else really there that you might be able to do to hurt each other because you've gotten past that hurdle, if that makes sense. And, well, it does it make sense. Remember does. Wes and Bananas talked about it in the documentary. They said by the end, he's like, I'm always, there's always going to be a part of, of, you know, bananas in my life. And I, I've come to just it, like it, accept it. And, you know, he's always going to be there. And it is really yeah. cool to see them grow. I, I love it. Yeah. Love like it. someone has grown on you so much and you're like, okay, well now I love you. And now everything that you, you used to do that pissed me off now is just another part of you that I accept and like love you even more for. And you know? people grow and people change. So maybe if they were still the people they were 10 years ago, maybe they wouldn't like each other, but they've both grown as people. And maybe because of those situations that they were so adverse against you, maybe they both grew from that and realized, look, we don't have to be these yeah. bunch of assholes to each other. Let's, let's and I'm real. curious too, because they're repeat offenders on this show. They're, they're regulars. And I'm curious who else really would have been their ride or dies. I mean, Devin, I guess, could maybe potentially be with Wes just because I feel like they've buddied up. They've worked together the before. Years. Right. Like they yeah. kind of talk about like, oh, this is my best friend on the show sort of thing. But they're all guy girl pairs, though. So I don't think they right. would do that. It, yeah exactly and for tori i would think anisa but that's girl girl yeah so in order to have them both on the show i feel like that might be the only girl guy friendship that makes sense and they had a big storyline on the last season like again they're they're fight and they're i love you you're a great friend let's not be in a fight yeah like, which was had... by the way i mean as we all know though it was such a bad season and i'm like i'm telling you this season after episode one looks better than after episode one of, of season 37. Yes. I know, but I we I need to keep my expectations moderate because I also did this for the CBS show. And I didn't end up loving that by like even, I don't know, eight episodes in. So I'm telling you, at least for the next couple episodes, what however they introduce Jordan into this mix and him and Tori having to be in that house for a couple of episodes, possibly either not talking or talking or fighting or making up, it's going to bring good TV for at least the first three episodes. So at least we know we have a buffer before we can start to hate it. Like there's going to be some good stuff there, I think. Well, thank God. I mean, again, we don't know. And now we're sort of getting, I, I, I don't want to, you know, jump ahead, but because of the structure of the show, it's, it's, it's a fucking, t I don't, can't follow. Like even watching it, I was having a hard time following. <laughs> so there's four. Well, and then what one, and what then, do you mean? You were, it was easy. It was a like, I was like, thank God Tori didn't go home tonight. She could have. Oh, oh, you mean just of them like, going home? Or like a this? chance based on who. All right. We'll get into the, we'll get into the, Hopefully the logistics in a second. Um, Let's, let's talk about Amber B and Chauncey before we forget. Uh, Amber, sorry, I guess they're just calling her Amber now. My bad, my bad. Oh, old, 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 old. She's always Amber. It baby. dies hard on Ryder Dies. Uh, yeah, so Amber and Chauncey are there. Apparently, Chauncey DM'd her, but we knew this from years ago from our, doing our challenge news and, and gossip on Patreon and on the on uh, on our after show here on YouTube. So they've been together for a while. They seem like they're legit in love and like he ain't looking at anybody else. He's 100%. She, she saw him talking to other girls at the club and she wasn't even phased by it. Like, this is like, some real this is some real shit here i'm i'm, I'm here for it i'm ready for yeah, it. i'm ready really to happy for them they both seem incredibly happy and they're super cute together just love it true yes, relationship. like chills like that i i legit chills i think they seem super in love she seems happy. Chills? i think i did i got i don't look the drama. I really have Yo, so pamela get, I Jenna, this isn't a, this I happens to a pam on a regular basis it's, her I'm hair so stand up psychic. so when something's like a real like oh they're in it for the long haul i'll get the chill. oh um, my god yeah it's my wit the witch, very sensitive the i feel like to yeah, have it, chills it, on that that they no, are I, I got it. I can okay. see that. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, you could have so just done this, and I am a, a firm believer. A firm believer. But you can't see what hair. Anyway, a firm believer that, like, happy people are nicer and cooler. Yeah. People. And she seems, the, the Amber Bee's annoying was, like, a theme throughout her seasons. And it was, like, I get it. I get it. Like, I liked her, and I thought she was always right, not in the wrong. But that, like, I get it. She could be annoying. Doesn't seem annoying. Seems confident, cool. Love is doing her right. I agree. Kayla. Well, let's also. be let's be real here too. She's decided to turn her. She says, "I'm not dealing with the vets anymore. I'm done with trying to make them like me. I'm done trying to work with them. I'm gonna do this whole rookie vibe thing." So not only does she have love in her life, but she has she feels that she has good people to work with, 
and we're seeing a yeah. different side of her, which is just a happy, just the happy side. So it's nice to see. Yeah. And I, I never want to like talk about someone's looks, but I, and maybe <laughs> when it's a positive thing, it's okay. I, she is like so fascinatingly gorgeous though, that it's weird that she's a real, like she's unreal. It's like, how right. are you real? Like she's she is, so, she is very attractive. She's yes. neat yeah. And stunning. Like, it's not just that she's pretty. Yes. Lot, they're all beautiful. Everybody on this is attractive, but it's like, like I could literally just look at her for a lot, you know, yeah. she's fascinating looking. So yeah, she's oh, that too. She has the coolest style. Yeah, I, I'm I'm happy to see her happy. She seems good. Um, we talked briefly about Colleen from the the mold Germany. She's also there <laughs> with this guy named Kim. Who was he also on the mold Germany, or is he just hanging out? I don't know. He's if he who puts his he? hair down, he's Fabio, right? I mean, he's got to put his hair down. He'll be Fabio, but I don't know who Kim who is, is. He I don't know. I... Is he on the mole? He's on the mole. No, I don't. I don't know. But we we went over it last time. I remember he was on a dating show. So I forget what the name of it is called, but yeah, I I don't. Know. I remember talking but, um, about his fabulous hair and that he had the same hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. As Some hair girl, but I feel like his hair's. He's got beachy waves. I mean, his hair's lovely, but who the F is he? I have no idea who Okay, I mean, okay, okay. I got it, I got it, I got him. He was on a, a German dating show called Prince Charming. That's what it was. Who the hell that knows what that means? I think it was the first gay dating show, if I'm not mistaken, where... I don't want to get that wrong. Yeah, I feel like so you're telling me Kim is gay. Yeah, I mean gay. He's not. He's not. I don't think that guy's gay. I don't think he's gay. My, hey, well, all we got to do is type in. Uh, I'll click on Where the link to the dating show here. I like the idea of it though. Prince Charming dating show is a reality dating show. Uh, hmm, I could have sworn. Not unlike the like producers and and showrunners of the this concept of the show is modeled after bachelor but with gay men and instead of having a rose ceremony it features a black tie that's ceremony. in america that was an american show is that the show he was on in germany um it says german tv series oh because i watched an american i watched the first gay american like i watched that but it was not german so i guess all right Kim Tronka is his name i don't fuck freaking no <laughs> i don't know uh, I don't we're gonna know. have All to right. de-pop this but he yeah was he was prince. Prince. yeah that's him he was a prince on it Speaking so it's which did you guys see bros i haven't no. watched it yet no oh my God, it's so oh, good, no i feel that... like i already watched it because the commercial they showed i know they showed, they showed a big damn before i'm all set it's thanks. great it's great but that guy i was like Gay. And again, that shows up. Oh, our, the one like, that's playing opposite it. to Billy Eckner? Yes. I was like, there's no way they would cast someone not gay in this role. But I was, he just, I was like, he's such a bro. But like, is he, he was, is, well, is he gay in he real life? in real life. Yeah, totally. yeah he is. Um, um, but our he, last couple, oh. our last ride or die. We have to talk about this guy. Nam is back for a third season. Maybe he'll finally get his due. He, I feel like he's been screwed off of every season he's been on. He brings... His friend Emmy, who again, Jenna, start looking stuff up here. Who the hell's Emmy? Uh, I think she was also from. I don't Germany. know, but <laughs> but I we saw all of twenty two seconds of Nam. Like it was really the most anticlimactic yeah. reveal. I mean, it was better really? because it was. Yeah, yeah I wanted uh, more Nam. I no, no, I'm not saying I want more Nam. But <laughs> weren't you pumped to see him come out? I love his growth. Yeah, but then that was it. We just saw him come out. <laughs> That's what I mean. All it was was we see him and then it's over with. What do you want so to do? Jumping? Like, you wanted a bench press for you, ladies, to show his muscles up? What did you want from this guy? I oh, wanted comments. to see oh, him oh. in the daily challenge. And like I said, in everybody's in defense, in everybody, every challenger's defense, we saw nobody on this challenge. They were just showing blips of people running in water. Like, I didn't know who was winning. Like, what? Where is every? I didn't know who was who. I will say this. They're trying to bring some colors back to the challenge. They got the purple fluorescent. They got the yellow fluorescent. This is some good stuff. Colorful. What is with the 80s graphics? I've been wanting to talk about this since the cast pictures came out with like the, the glamour shot. Laser you don't like it? Them. I think it's better than the, like just like the dark and stormy stuff. I, I... Yes, better than that. Like I, I, again, a couple of weeks ago watched that. This setup, like this, the way the show is, 
is so much more reminiscent of those days yeah than that so now that they've got the challenge usa i think they're like great let's give the people what they know yeah on MTV. yeah all right, I'm trying to look up Emmy, but the Emmys are coming up, so I can't find any more about Emmy. Um, yeah, so basically, my point is they try to make it a thing that Nam comes out, and it's like, Nam is here. But that is all you see of him the entire episode. He might as well have not been there. Well, uh, well, that I can't like I can't believe you're. I'm so happy he's back. I guess that I'm just like okay, we'll see him next episode. That's all right. You can't get I the wanted 30, more too. I'm you like, can't I'm get the 26 guy. people in one episode. It just doesn't happen. Um, I'm with you, Jenna, and also about minimizing our expectations. Because remember, we liked X on the Beach episode one. We were like, it's going to be real. Oh, right. We did. It's going to oh, be genuine. So now I'm like, God, I hope we're not being toy. Well, with, you know but- what they always say about less being more? Like, you want to leave people wanting more. But the last few seasons have not done that because they are an hour and a half long episodes in a 19 episode season with four parts of reunion. It's like, you're not leaving us anything that's making us like, Ooh, we want the next episode. Instead, we're like fatigued about having to watch the next episode because we've already seen so much drag out by that. You know what it is too? You know why they want that extra 30 minutes, an hour and a half? You know why they want it? Because thank you. But think about this. Think about this. The first hour is like a regular amount of commercials from six o'clock till six thirty on the on on the on the on the uh, West Coast, they put in like extra commercial breaks to get extra commercials in for the extra thirty minutes, and they make extra moolah. I mean, I think that's definitely one of the reasons they do, they're doing this shit. Um, well, but they made I want to say Kit Kat and a Reese's and a Bailey's. Like I was like that Bailey's with witches and marshmallows. Did you see that? Yeah, that unfortunately, I watched Bailey's it live. Part? I couldn't fast forward anything. Yeah, me too. And I was like, that looks so fun. Yeah, they got me those commercials. Um, one more fun fact on the Daily Challenge: uh, Nelly is now zero and fifty-one in his last. Is that 51. really true? That's what Devin, Devin said. I don't know if he was being facetious, but I it I felt like a might. real number. I think you might. Have it also been. feels like. Well, a lot of people don't always win daily challenges, you know? Yes, but you win like every other season. If you if you were to participate two seasons, you'd win one challenge, one daily yeah, like challenge. Like they say, a blind squirrel some gets the nut eventually. They find a nut eventually, right? right? Yeah, you bump right. into like, a nut, yeah. Like you would just accidentally win. I like that Nelly spun it though. Like, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, you know? Because I'm not put into eliminations. And it's like, sure. She did spins on that because we all know that Nelson is such a challenge competitor loyalist like he loves nothing more than the the love of the competition and like putting his all into it but he he was being cute with that trying to spin zone it because I think he he I don't know I guess I would expect him to maybe get a little bit more sensitive to that subject but he laughed it off which was great He's also seems great, oh, mature. I mean, we've known these people like the Kayla's and Nelson's for like, it's gotta be at least a decade that we've seen them on these things. Not Nelson, <laughs> but Kayla, hell yeah. Because if her real world Las Vegas was like, right. was like 2010 or 2009, like it was 13 right. years and ago. <laughs> Nelly's Are You The One with, I think it had to be a long time ago, but the, whatever it is. No, Nelly's Are You One was a while ago, yeah. Maturing, like, thank God they're mature. You know, it'd be a problem if they weren't, but it is nice to see, like, he's got a sense of humor about himself For more sure. than he probably used to. Um. All right, so deliberation happens. Johnny and uh, Raven get to pick four teams this season. I don't know if this is how it's always going to be, but probably how it's starting. They get to pick four teams to go down to the zone. What? Well, how do we? The zone. The yeah, zone. zone. Auto zone. <laughs> I thought of. I thought of. I thought of the discovery zone. Remember the discovery zone? When we were kids. It was like a Chuck E. Cheese yeah, spinoff yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 I thought of that. I thought of. Uh, fro- Love that. I thought of Frozone from The Incredibles. I thought of. <laughs> I didn't even catch the name. Well, I thought it was AutoZone. Get in the zone. AutoZone. Well, what if it was sponsored by AutoZone this season? I'd laugh my ass that, off. That would be some nice nostalgic challenge. Like, right. and today you're getting a bike. A free pair of brake pads. Yes. Or it's Tire like, iron. I'm, I'm telling you the hint from our T-Mobile 13. I used to love when they would read things off of the yeah, phone. Yeah, it's so like. Hey, right. I just got a new I got a new text on the sidekick. They'd flip yes. it. Right. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, Laurel and Jack, Tori and Devin, Colleen and Kim, Kayla and Sam are the four nominated. And then they go well, into wait, this big... Have, yeah, bold moves by Johnny and Raven and good strategy. I like their theory, like throw one in, a rookie team in, so they're not on to yeah. us. But let's go for the video. Yeah, I was really happy with that whole progression. You see Raven say, like, let's not take it easy. Like, let's, you know, team up with the rookies and let's throw some vets in and then johnny's like yeah and let's even level up maybe one layer smarter and throw a decoy in there so that people don't think that we're like clearly only targeting the veterans so i love like it was well thought out and i'm glad that they're playing fearlessly and honestly it's like thank god and you should i know there's a lot of money on the line but other than that what else do you really have to lose not right. Yeah. That's that. This is what we've been kind of waiting for. Like, why are we all playing it safe? Make your move because there's so many damn twists. You don't know if it's going to affect you. And like I always say, make a big move because next week someone else will do something and you're off the damn hook. It's not mm -hmm. as common. It still happens, but it's not as common where someone like a Johnny Bananas comes in. I was like, I'm going after this person all season. Wes is my enemy. I'm going after like Wes would always do it to Bananas. It's just right. not as common ground anymore because there's just too much going on. There's too many new people and it's not 24 competitors anymore. There's 32. Right. There's eight more damn people that can get in the way of people winning. It's like, it just needs to change. And it it's, is. It's more of a mix and it is good. Again, thank goodness a rookie did their homework and knows like as a rookie, like this doesn't have to be this way, especially we can set the tone. So yeah, it was great to watch. And that's why I was impressed with Johnny. He wasn't just yeah. like, oh, here, I used to be on Mobile Island. Like, I love it. Like, and I'm so knew glad. What he was doing. And I'm going to believe in the authenticity of how it played out in terms of they won that so fair and square. I mean, they, oh, yeah. Jay and Michelle were on their heels, but other than that, they smoked everybody in that competition. So therefore, it's like obviously true that they're in the power position, but it just feels like, the audience's prayers are answered, that it almost makes you a little suspicious in reality TV. You're like, how did they get the team to win that they knew we're going to throw in vets and spice things up a little bit? But that's just actually lovely, like authentic TV playing out. So I do uh -huh. I, I, yeah. I hope for damn sure. Don't even get me started. That makes me nervous. You just gave me a, cons I don't like even hearing a conspiracy like that. No, it's not a conspiracy. It's more of like, Oh wow, this is great that it panned it, out. It was great TV tonight. Them, it was it great. probably would have been so boring. Like if they had not won, how would it how were the chips have fallen? You know? They might the, right. if 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 Tori and Devin won, they throw in three rookie teams and then we have third challenge season 37 all over again. Johnny is representing the La Cienega LA Fitness of Greater Los Angeles very well. Go Johnny, <laughs> very excited. How okay. So I also have to say I God, I was being such a hater about Kayla this episode because she just kept giving me reasons to be a hater. Like, oh, wow. she just kept saying, I know she's been on the show for a long time, but she's really not that fantastic at the show that she always pumps her chest out that she's like, wow, good move, but stupid. Wow, what a stupid right. move. She, yeah, she well, how about, how about like uh, Johnny celebrating way too much because of his win? Why don't you mind your business or maybe you win and then you can celebrate like how you yeah. want, well, I, how I you think, think it's things preferred. Made me like Kayla tonight. Like I, I like her know. and her husband. I don't think she really cares, but I could see me and Luke being like, what was that? Like, hoo, hoo. like being like what he was so excited. Like, it's just a couple, like more like, like, Ooh. I don't know. I, I mean, but come I on, Pamela, who are you rooting say... for in the elimination? Oh, I mean, what, like, one million percent. I'm not going to deny right. it. I thought Kayla and her and Sam were cute. And I thought that she was like, oh, I hate a social game. Like, he was like, okay, Kayla. Like, he seemed, their dynamic was cute. It was charming me. Her being like, big mistake was stupid and Kayla-ish and weird. But at this point, I've like come to love it. Like, we're saying it's like, oh, Kayla, what are you talking about? I agree. But I'm still not like being oh, Kayla about it. Because I feel like it's just reminiscent of her and Sylvia kind of always having this entitlement in the game yes. always kind of having this like stink about thinking maybe that they're better than they are and I've never played the game so yeah. I'm hating from outside the club I'm hating from the couch you know what? I understand all of this however I just feel like she kept saying this was such a stupid move such a stupid move and in my head I'm like why they smoked you in the daily challenge <laughs> like, well, you Kayla, Kayla played, played well in all-stars three didn't she did she play pretty she, well there yeah she did play well on that 
but that's I mean, again a different yeah, level. Yeah, it's a Thank different. You. I don't know. Well, I just she feel like... she was, and you're right, Pamela. She was Pamela. See, I went Pamela. She was the youngest on that show. Everyone else was much older. Maybe that definitely uh, helped her out. We did look that up. We were like, oh, is she really an all star? She's actually only 29. Everyone else is 38, like 45. Right. You know, so right. But basically, like she was or kind over. of being a hater. <laughs> So therefore that made me a hater, you know? <laughs> I, I I didn't mind her in this episode. Um, I was surprised at how much I actually liked her, but I have to switch gears real quick to the daily. Yeah. So the daily thing, and just very quickly, because I know we're we're on to the the final, but okay. So am I wrong? Like the whole thing about ride or dies, I thought it would be like one person runs there. And the question is like, what's Jenna's favorite ice cream flavor? And like, you have to do something. Yes. Was, I was like, wait, they're yeah. just together. Yeah. It was questions. that part was so, but like, yeah, but, themselves and Nelson still screwed up his age. Like they can't do that because half of them probably aren't truly ride or dies. I think right. the producers put some of these couples together. But TJ even says in the opening, he's like, look, to ride or die should know these things. So I was like, all right. Like, yeah. Uh, that's why I was I'm like, wait, what do you mean they have to know these things? Don't you just have to know your own shit? What are we doing here? But then they run together and it's like, how old are you? Like, they have no idea, you know? <laughs> when so did we meet? When did we meet? Uh, what was the point? Right, we met like, when the producers put us together two weeks ago in exactly. quarantine? Right. Yeah. Like, it yep. should have been one goes and doesn't an answer and then you have to, like, answer on that. That's where I was like, wait, am I am I missing something? Or is it, but I guess that was it, to run with your partner and answer questions together? Like, you don't have to know. It wasn't like, no. I answered I mean, for you. I that right away. I had the same exact thought. And it was like, wait, why aren't these, like, newlywed questions? All they're doing is doing math. I mean, the yeah. one, what year did you meet? Yes, and I was going to say newlywed, and I'm like, people under, like, 35 will have no idea what newlywed is, but, like, you yeah. okay. So, yeah, I'm um, like, it's like that. It should be, like, your favorite ice cream flavor. Like, that's what it was, a show me, you know me. Uh, let's <laughs> let's uh, let's head down to the zone to find out the rules and regulations this season. Here we go. All right, so we find out that the uh, the people that win nominate the four people that go down there. And then what happens is what? I don't even know. Twisty, twisty, twist. They draw daggers. They pick, no, the people oh. that win get to pick one of those four people to guaranteed go in, and they pick Kayla and Sam. Then the And the next three that are left go to something called the draw, where they all pull out the daggers. Then the per one of those daggers has the word safe on it, and that person then gets safety, and they get to pick one of the other two teams that are left to go against Kayla and Sam. They pick Devin and Tori, and they participate in a game called You Move, I Move. Just like What that. another move, amazing move, TV Just moment, like though, that. that the first two picked were planes. So it was like, cool because right. we didn't know what that meant yet. That was fun. Now we're going to know, though. Oh, we yeah. all, like them, I think, assumed it meant you're safe. Like, I did, too. Doing the X. Like, up oh, your dagger's plane. Hey, we got the payoff, Jenna. They tricked us. TJ tricked us. The, the tricks kept coming, so I loved that because... It was already cool enough that they bring the three people down and that they have to pick it. The a power team has to pick a couple. Right? I know it's so the many power, the, that the power couple oh, picks a guaranteed yeah. person out of those yes. four group. Okay, so they yes, pick, they pick them and Kayla. But then the other teams aren't safe. They also have to pull a dagger out. But they trick you because they think pulling out a blank dagger means you're safe. So it's actually crazy that the last team to pick picks the one that has the words on it because right. Devin and Tori pick and it's blank and you're thinking, oh, Devin and Tori are safe. Laurel and Jack pick and you're thinking, oh, Laurel and Jack are safe. And at that point, I'm thinking, damn, this is the worst case scenario because now Kayla and Sam are likely going to come back because they're going to go against this rookie team that's never been on the challenge before. And it also goes against Johnny and Raymond's whole plan. They Those were only the scapegoats. They were only the decoy. This all sucks. Right. I thought that they were going to go in and then they pull a sword that says safe. And then TJ reveals, okay, so that means you get to pick out of these other two teams. And it's just all of these unraveling of amazing twists now that are really going to make the whole climate of the game interesting because you're never going to be able to promise shit to anybody. No. Nope. So like, right. Not only does the alliances, power team, yeah. the power team has blood on their hands with four teams. 
They have to pick one of the four, and then the other three are still vulnerable. And then the one team that's safe will also get blood on their hands because then they have to pick one of the two teams that are available for the elimination. Right. So, so this, is, this is what I think should happen every week. Yeah, so now every week, supposedly, this is what's going to happen. Wouldn't it be interesting if every week they have to nominate the four, then the, the power couple gets to put one down there, but then each week those three teams have to do something different each week, like instead of having the three oh. daggers to pull, there's like a there's three blocks or four or six blocks. And like if you get an X, maybe you're safe. Maybe, and, okay. and TJ reveals it every week that's something different. So you never that's know. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. And it, it adds something for the viewers, but it's still the same concept every week. Right. You don't know how it's going to play out. It would just make it because it was, I wasn't looking at my phone, Jenna. Nope. I was 100% in for an hour and a half. And that is rare. So why, why wouldn't they do that for us every week? Give us something different, but the same, right? That's what we want. Maybe, maybe yeah. it's tough to, to pull that off. I don't know. Um, that's great. That's wishful thinking. Um, Also, I don't know. I'd still be down for this current twist to play out a little bit longer. Like, like give this a few weeks though. Because, no, I agree. Wow. No, and I'm saying it's probably going to stay like this all season, which is going to give us enough drama as it is. Because if you make alliances with two people, but you pull the safety dagger and you got to pick against one people in your alliance, and they come back and they win and come back. Well, I guess your alliance isn't your alliance anymore. You just sent them in there and they're pissed at you. And um, four teams is a lot of people when there's no pawn. Like you, a, a, there's no safety with a pawn. You're not saying four teams are like, we're not picking you. So like you well, can't I think it's great. mess around with that. By like, the way, I should have teased this at the beginning of our episode tonight, but I have a, I have a conspiracy that I meant to tease at the beginning and it, it happens right now. I wish it was at the beginning. When they start this uh, this challenge called You Move, I Move, they do a uh, a confessional with Kayla. And Kayla tells us, well, this isn't very fair because Devin has this exact game. Either it yeah. is his coffee yeah, table or it's table. on his like coffee, his coffee table. table. It yeah. is his coffee table. It is his coffee, ta- his coffee yeah. t- table. Now, we find they the producers find out a while ago that Devin and Tori are going down there and they cannot afford to lose this team this early in the game. At least I feel uh, like they can't. So they give a elimination that they know, even if Devin doesn't go down there, whatever, someone else will play it, but let's put elimination down there that we know Devin will be good at. If he does, unfortunately not get the right moves and then boom, he plays it and absolutely destroys them. That's a fun conspiracy. I'm not saying it's true, but I love yeah, to throw maybe. them in there just for fun. Um, I like it. I mean, I like honestly, it. none of us know anything that goes on in that production. So any idea is an interesting possible one. I, I do think it was kind of a fitting game for Devin, right? Because so it was, was a little right? bit more mind, mindy. I have <laughs> to say though, doing, like I'm good at things like that, but doing with a, a physical 3d board with a partner is very different than like yes it's something that Devin's skill set but even if you sit and play freaking get the ball out of the thing and with your hands i all get play, it i totally I mean, you might have some strategy ideas yeah you're, put, you're putting holes in my conspiracy J- pamela but so. i really like it though because i was telling you like before the like show that. starts that i as much as i like when you can just be like an authentic athletic competitor i like these these janky ones. I that, like well, but this is this well, is this old is school good. challenge. You have communication. You have to have hand eye coordination. That's where I'm like, which I don't unless it's really simple. So if it was like me telling my legs and a partner and my body like how to make a ball move, like that in my mind is already making me so frustrated. I'd be like, go to the left, like go to the yeah. left. Uh, <laughs> call me crazy, but instead of having all the random shots where I couldn't really tell what was going on on the board. I would have loved to just go to a split screen, show me both teams and what's going on. And you can fast forward stuff if you have to, because it's obviously, they, I don't want to, I can't see it in real time because we don't, it's already, the show's already an hour and a half. But like, I I didn't really, I understood they were destroying Kayla mm-hmm. and Sam, but at the same time, I didn't really know what was going on for mo- the most part. Like how they were, how did they move the board properly? How did they <laughs> figure it out? But Devin was so calm. Now, when Tori said she wanted her mother, I think she was being serious. Was that, that wasn't a joke, yeah, right? She was kidding. She was kidding. Are she you was sure? Kidding. She was kidding. It with seems what serious. She, said. she was kidding by saying, I want my mommy, but she was, was emotional. Okay, so yeah. thank she you. So that felt real to me. She wasn't yeah. really saying, I want my mommy, but she was like, I, you know. It I wasn't a, I, I want my mommy as a joke. I thought it was like, she does, like, she, she was she, she's nervous. Out. Yeah. I'm so nervous. So it, it's funny that she said that because even when I get like 
stomach virus to this day, I always have the urge to be like, mom. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a nostalgic warmth, the childhood thing. Of course. Yeah. It makes it's sense. It's also a real, like, I don't want to be a super bummer, but like, no, like dying soldiers are always like, I want like for real, their last thing is like, I want my mom. Like that's often. Oh like, my God. Well, oh, yeah, I mean, no, I'm, it's like a horrible. Well, no, and my, a, like to Dan's point, nostalgia. Or like, just it's like, not just nostalgia. Maternal. It's like, that's your go-to human. I mean, you're connected to that person mommy. on yeah. another level. So that's why it's funny. So, no, I mean, I, I get what she's saying when she says that. Cause when I have the stomach virus, like, and I live alone and I'm thinking like, Oh, I want mom. Like, obviously she's not here, yeah. but, but you have that feeling. So she, uh, she was really startled. She definitely was having a tough time and she was starting to get emotional and to cry. So I want my mommy. She doesn't mean like, I want my mom right. here to like pick me up and coddle me like a baby. But she is saying like, ah, I'm not she okay. Help. Like, help. I need something. Someone save me. But I think Devin understood that and was like, calm down where I need you to calm down. Like he, again, that saved them. And I was so nervous because, you know, when you, as soon as you psych yourself out, I was like, is she going to fuck it up for them, for her? Like, and I was like, is my TV energy going to fuck it up for her? Because I'm getting so scared now that they're not going to win. And then Sam and Kayla got the first ball. And I was like, are they going to go home tonight? Like- Devin, Devin was way too calm to, to let Tori get to that level. And he's like, look, lean on me. All right. You are only can move the board halfway. So I need you to just do that. And I'll take care of like, what work, what are the next moves with these balls? Basically, you know, yes, it was great. And, yeah. and she calmed down and they're great for each other. And I hope they fall in love. Oh, uh, yeah. by the way, we got our first uh, pussy chicken of the uh, season. This pussy tonight. chicken level so- three. Second chicken. and third. Correct. Like so if you wanna, if you wanna hash, if you're still listening, hashtag pussy chicken in the comment section so we know you're still listening, wow. and we'll get to our final That's twist. But Jenna, you had something to say. Did I? Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, Devin. Well, good let's day. get to our final hey, twist yeah. then. Didn't Sam seem fun though? Like he seems like a fun guy, a nice guy. I didn't really. I don't. I, I didn't mind them staying, but if out of the two, I wanted them to go home. I also felt like this house. We didn't get to see as much of the sleeping arrangements, but like, do they each have their own room? Like Sam and Kayla, when they were talking, I felt like they were in their own goddamn room. I don't know, but it has old school challenge vibes to the house and I'm all here for it. So that's good too. Again, they gave us like an old school challenge house. It looks like they can have a lot of fun in it. There's a, there's a cool gym right there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Johnny will represent there at that. Johnny's going to represent all the way in Argentina, the, the LA fitness. Exactly. So your final twist, Dan, is Bananas and Nani walking out. Um, I Well, they showed it in a preview earlier in the episode. I knew exactly who they were, so I wasn't like surprised when I saw them coming out. But the way they showed them coming out, the slow motion, the shots of the audience that they kept showing of the other cast members, I loved it. I know I always complain about like the, the yacht thing was lame. I, I loved every second of this and I don't don't I, I don't know. Maybe call me a just an old school challenge no, fan, but I loved I it. I liked it too. I enjoyed it, but I do feel I do feel like the reactions were so dramatic. I know, but, but that's what probably, made it so good. I guess it's because Johnny is coming out of his retirement. Retirement, right? correct. Like he said he retired. He looks great. He looks like he's in great shape. And yeah, I mean, he's Johnny Bananas, but I couldn't help but interpret that he felt like he was so cool. But Jenna, the last season he won, or he played no, it, he won. It. So like, this is it, like, oh like, my God, really, we have to beat like, the champion. The hood, like he really revealed he re- that was like, I'm me. Like he, I wish yeah. he didn't block Nani the whole way in. The, I mean, this is me being a stickler. I know they're just filming them walking in. Yeah, yeah. Nani should have been like, you should have been a little ahead of him because you're behind him already. So, yeah. Okay, can we talk about Banana's hair during the documentary? We discussed that yet. It was long. It yeah. was like the awful, like, he had a lot like of hair. 1987, he good- like, normal bangs and hair and then like long in the back it wasn't a yeah. mullet like long like that but it was like i think is it long back. this season as well we haven't it seen him about his hair. like it was it looked like a seventh grade skateboard he's got a lot of hair good for him congratulations on the hair um i don't know it was terrible it was terrible i wanted it looked like mm-mm. well as a as a male that has hair deficiency I, if i had hair like that i'd grow it all the way to my hair knees. deficiency it's, it's going in the front. Yeah, I can you see, see holes all over the I mean, damn place. Look, at it's going up high. I'll say right now, um, if I had Johnny's hair, I'll grow it out. I don't care. Just okay. give me the hair. All right. Give all me right. The hair. Fine. 
Uh, but right, no, I, I hear what you're saying though too, Pam. All right, well, yeah, uh, like so far. The back length nobody needs. Like I get what you're saying, but the it's back length, that yeah, extra two inches at the back. Um, like, let's, say, let's let's say this. Um, Pamela rates everything from one through five before we go. Rate the episode one through five. What do you give it on a star rate from one through I'm five stars? A solid four. Yeah. I really liked it. It's not like there was no room for improvement, but again, did not look at my phone once, paused it, and then couldn't figure out how to like fast forward or wasn't allowed to and was like, no, did I miss a second? So I definitely liked it a lot. Solid. Jenna? Four. I like that. Uh I'm going to give it a 3.8 really? because I feel like we, you know what, maybe 3.7 because I feel like there was so much of that challenge we didn't get to see. Sure. There were so many teams. I understand it's an hour and a half long episode, but I don't know. I feel like they could have done maybe a little bit of a better job of, of showing some of these teams that we saw nothing about. I understand what you're saying. In or maybe honor- like, again, some of the personalities just, they haven't stuck yet, but I know it's episode one, but yeah, it's early. But it's also that sort of thing where it's like, okay, it's just the reality TV influencers, you know, it's kind of going down that path again. So hopefully we get to see more of a real side to them other yeah. than just feeling like, okay, we're watching more of like fake kind of people. Well, you know? and, and I'll say this, in honor of Challenge 38, I'll give it the 3.8 that you had before, <laughs> Jenna. Oh. And the reason wow. I'll... And the reason I'll only give it a 3.8 is because I can do without these deliberation and interrogation scenes. I think they're a waste of time. I don't care. Just show me them talking in the house. I don't need them to go into a room privately and talk. Show me the drama in the house where they have to go like try to talk in rooms and stuff like they used to. This BS. Episode I hate one, it. Though, I hate it. I can't stand it. For drama. But they didn't know how it was going to work. Like, I understand, but I'm sure we'll get more strategizing in the house. As- I don't need, but like, get rid of those scenes altogether. They're going to do it every week and you know it. It's going to follow the same format every damn week. I, I didn't mind it at all because, well, at least for this one, I didn't mind it. I might start to mind it, but I liked seeing, do they squirm? Do they offer a deal? Do they throw someone else under the butt? Like, I thought it was telling. Every single her- one of them was like, oh, what deal will you give me? Can we be friends <laughs> after this? And then Kaylee even said, we're not going to. Like, if they give us a deal, we're still not going to work with them. So it's like, what's the point of having the conversations? Like, I don't need to see it. All right. I'm sorry. That was my rant. No, you're, no, that's a really good point. I actually really like that because I did like the interrogations because I felt like Laurel and Jack and uh, Tori and and Devin stuck out to me as being better negotiators, presenting themselves better than Kayla and Sam. So I, I felt like if I was Johnny and Raven based off the interrogations, I would vote in Kayla and Sam as well. So, but to your point, Dan, it does force people to strategize and have a political and strategic game when it used to be gameplay to approach people with that. So it is kind of it, it might be nicer to see how people just authentically handle that in the, in the house and do they, and other people I'm sure are kind of like maybe trying to eavesdrop or they're sensing things. So it definitely like shakes things up. Yeah. A little bit. And as it gets deeper, when it's like, all right, look, Jenna, you think Dan doesn't like, Dan was just telling Tori that he's going to vote you in next week. So you want him out. You know what I mean? Like it gives the opportunity throw people under the bus to reveal right. like give me your information now yeah like, like somebody could run people. up and as as two people are talking right. you know say like oh you're talking to this person is that yeah you can't hear what anybody else is saying in the interrogation room so it doesn't make things as right. I guess, right it's like i'm gonna tell you i'm in a secret alliance with these three people and i will guarantee you safety with all those people if you keep me safe i mean there's a lot of opportunity for stuff to come out so i don't mind it All right. Well, we'll see. Well, thank you all so much for joining us for this first episode of The Challenge, Ride or Dies, episode one. Don't die for me, Argentina. We'll be back next week uh, on next Wednesday for another episode. We're super excited about this season. I'm I'm hyping the crap out of it, and I love every second of it. At least I hope three episodes of goodness. Don't hype three. Give me three episodes, please. Reasonable expectations, Sam. Keep it forever. Keep it wonderful. I'm up here. You ladies are doing doing the smart thing. I get it. I get it. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. See ya. Bye, guys.